Yes, everyone. Welcome back to the Irish Hotspur. Jack here, joined by Locks from Blue Tinted Glasses, both on YouTube as well as on Twitter. Please check them out. Be in the description as well as in the comments pinned down there. But we're going to be doing an opposition fan preview this season, and Locks is going to be our very first one. Looking forward to this. And let's get straight into it. If you can for me, please smash the like button. Get into the comments as well. Thanking Locks for being our very first one of the season. But where do you think Leicester are going to be finishing this season, sir? And what do you think of Steve Cooper in general? We played him last season when he was uh, the manager of Forest. Well, first of all, pleasure, pleasure to be on the channel. Much appreciated. Thanks for asking me on. Um, yeah, I mean, it, well, it's it's our first game back in the Premier League. Yeah. You know, it's uh, so it's my first Premier League uh, pre opposition preview in in over a year. So um, I wish I was more excited for the game than I am. Uh, I, I, I'm not excited at all. Um, I think 90% of 90% of Leicester fans aren't looking forward to this season, which is crazy because as a team that's just won the championship coming up to the Premier League, in most cases, you'd be very happy. The fans would be over the moon being in the Premier League in the big time, playing against the likes of Tottenham and Man City and Liverpool and et cetera. But, you know, Leicester have been here before we we got promoted you know 10 years ago and then we went and won the premier league and then we went and won the <laughs> fa cup and then we went and played in europe and then we got relegated and uh, so there's not that same excitement and i think there would be maybe a little bit more excitement if we were still under enzo maresca or i don't know a, another sexy football type of manager but we are stuck with steve cooper um which is a shame. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm very vocal online um, about Steve Cooper, about the decision to to go with Steve Cooper. I think it was a very uninspiring choice after an an exciting manager in Enzo Maresco in terms of the style of football and things like that, um, and working under Pep. Um, but yeah, Steve Cooper. Where do I start? Well, we thought we were getting Graham Potter, which you know he's he's, he's not the the biggest name out there, but it's still better than than what we're stuck with right now and. Uh, in in my eyes, Steve Cooper has a terrible record at, at this at this level. You know, he got, he got Forest promoted. Fair enough, he won the under 19s World Cup or, or Euros, whichever one it was, with England. But in the Premier League, he survived by the skin of his teeth with Forest first time, and then he got sacked. Uh, you know, a couple of months into the into the following season. So I think he's won 12 games in a year and a half in the Premier League, and his his win Next. ratios like. 19% or something silly like that. So as you can imagine, we're not very excited. We're not, we're not excited at all. We're we're actually worried about how big the score line might be on Monday night, if I'm honest. Mm, just a quick off the script kind of question that maybe I didn't tell you beforehand. But yeah, what are your thoughts? Is it also maybe combined with the fact that I know you guys are having some financial kind of issues and troubles? You're not really sure which players you can bring in, what your budget is. Is that also kind of the worry amongst Leicester fans right now? So, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, misconception around this. So it's not actually financial problems. A lot of people think Leicester are in a in a you know have a financial problem. It's actually just the FFP side of things, the PSR. So we have the money, we just can't spend it because we had the eighth highest wage bill in the Premier League when we got relegated. So we were the eighth biggest spenders in the Premier League. We got relegated. We still had most of the players in the Championship, so we made a big loss there, and we're still making a loss now, obviously, and. Um, so that's the problem. We, we're, we're trying to be reserved with the money that we spend on wages and transfer money and all of this um, so that we don't breach again, because we breached in 20, the year we got relegated to so 22, 23. Mm. We're getting a points deduction for that this season. We don't know when, we don't know how big it's going to be, but it will be this year at some point, um, which again adds to the you know the the worry for this season um so that that's that's been a, a thing that's been looming over us all summer you know we we've managed to make a couple signings and a couple decent signings as well like um squad player bobby decord over reed from fulham who i think's a a good signing for a relegating a relegation fighting team um a Coley's a center back from atalanta you know he he doesn't look amazing but he's young still there's a lot of of room to grow um, and then Abdul Fatawi, which we'll get into in a moment, but Abdul Fatawi is is one that was on loan with us last season. We've made it permanent, and, and he is the one. All our season hopes are on Abdul Fatawi this season, I think. For sure. Yeah, I've definitely heard his name mentioned plenty of times before this last season. And what I find funny about Leicester is you guys are probably the true definition of 
both the good side and the bad sides of the roller coaster yeah. type of club where from promotion to to winning the league to relegation to ffp to steve cooper uh you know you've lived it all you know it feels like yep. in the last 10 years uh compared to maybe us spurs fans which has been a lot of the same old um but what are the danger players i mean you just alluded to one of them for lester who are the players that you think if you were to cause spurs problems who do you think would cause spurs problems well, I mean, if, if Jamie Vardy was fit, I would say him. He, he looks like he might miss the game. He's 38 years old. He's, you know, he's on his last legs. Uh, everyone knows Jamie Vardy. You don't need me to tell you about him. He's still got the the dog in him, you know. Um, you know, he's, he, he scored 18 goals last season at 37 years old. and um, But it, it doesn't look like he's going to be fit. Um, Abdul Fatawu is the main one. He's just incredible. He, he's, he was on, he's a Ghanaian international um, he was at Sporting Lisbon. Um, I think he moved there when he was quite young. And yeah, we we picked him up out of nowhere really last last summer uh, on loan with an option to buy of twelve million pounds. I think it is, and um, you know, unheard of really in in European football at the time. No one. He, he was only in like the under twenty ones in 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 Portugal. Um, and he came in last season and he he made an instant impact. Um, you know, Leicester have been really struggling with the right wing position for five years. Since Riyad Mahrez left Leicester City, we've struggled to kind of find that replacement. We've had, you know, hit and miss players. We had a Yosi Perez, for example, and Tete last uh, in, in the year we got relegated from Galatasaray. And we had uh, Adamola Luckman on loan at one point, which right. he, he was quite good. And he's gone on to do great things since. Um, so... Fatuwu coming in is, you know, a right-sided player with a hell of a left foot. You know, we just like look at him and think, oh, here's our marriage replacement. And um, what he can do in terms of beating man, his pace, cutting in on his left and, and bending one into the top corner is his biggest asset, in my opinion. He did it several times last season. Um, he's very rash. He's very raw. He can make mistakes because of that. Um, he, he's got sent off last season for very rash challenge on on someone you know as he was coming back to help uh defend so but but majority of Leicester fans you know look at our team now and think the one player there who is the standout who is the one that will come up with some a moment of magic to win a game or or you know get a point it would be Abdul Fatawu um on the yeah. you know on some not so magical players but still you know very important players for us Harry Winks of course of um former Tottenham player he was instrumental last uh, last season for us in terms of dictating play and um you know at the championship i know a lot of tottenham fans didn't actually don't you know we're quite glad to see the back of harry winks but let me tell you <laughs> in the championship he was a cheat code as you can imagine he was he was incredible for us um doubts there over his ability as like a, a six because he's in pre-season he's, he's kind of uh, been a double pivot basically two sixes of him and ndidi um there's doubts there in terms of defensively but uh, in terms of short passes and trying to dictate play, he's very good at that. But I don't think there'll be much of that against Tottenham on Monday, if I'm honest. It's and probably true Spurs fashion, though, he'll probably put in his very best performance if he can, you know, against us, knowing that it is the former club and probably knowing that me and my partner Dave were very, very critical of him in his final years in a Spurs shirt, especially on yeah. that defensive end that you mentioned. We just we felt like he just couldn't really handle himself uh, defensively and we needed kind of a deep line kind of defensive destroyer next to him in order for him to really play well, if that makes any sense. Yeah, well, to be fair, you know, it's natural. Obviously, you, you, you're you at a club like Tottenham and then you drop down a level, especially to the championship. And it was a big move for him because I'm sure a, a, a lower, you know, like a Luton or someone like that last season, a Sheffield United, they would have taken him, I'm sure. But he decided to come to Leicester. And I think it was the right choice for him because he had a full year of, of playing in a team that was winning every single week. And... Uh, he got confidence from that, and you know, a, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Hayes, actually, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he, um, you know, he he joked around last season saying, "Oh well," because he scored a goal, he scored a great goal uh, away at QPR last season, and I found a couple of clips of Harry Winks scoring goals for Tottenham in the past, and they they looked like they were accidents, they like crosses and yeah, and just flukes, and 
Uh, but I said to Matt the other day, I said it wouldn't surprise me if he uh, if he bags a goal against you on Monday night. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I said, it often can happen with a former yeah. player. But um, just before we get on to one of our former players that's about to play you guys, um, just any players that you could see maybe Spurs looking to target, looking to take advantage of, like real weaknesses in either the back line, goalkeeper, any areas, if you want to give away any secrets? I mean... As, as I've said, and as you've probably gauged, you know, I don't have much hope for the game. I, I, in, in terms of strength, I mean, I, you know, I look at the Tottenham side and I, from a Leicester point of view, for, for six, seven years, you know, we were like above Tottenham in, in you know, many of occasions, many seasons. And I used to just love banter in Tottenham. I, we've got a bit of history, Leicester and Tottenham, in terms of the 2016 title banter back and forth and all of that. Um but if I'm being real, you know, now that I am in the back seat, now I'm now I'm the the, the lower team in the equation. You know, I, I, you have to look at the Tottenham squad and say, you know, there's some in, incredible incredible players there. I mean, Pedro Porro for me is is one of my favourite right backs to watch. Um, when we were, you know, last season, for example, and and the year before, you know, every time I've watched Pedro Porro, I've really enjoyed watching him. Um, Archie Gray is one that I did want to ask you about as well because. Last season in the Championship, obviously, I experienced a lot of Archie Gray and I've got many Leeds fans uh, who are friends as well. And, you know, they absolutely adore him. And I was actually curious whether he would play, where he fits in. Because I know he plays right mm. back, he plays centre midfield. Your, your midfield's stacked. So yeah. I'm not sure where he... You know, Pedro Porras at right back. So I don't know how it all works with, with Archie Gray. Yeah, the Archie Gray signing is still a funny one for us because it makes a lot of sense because we're in this kind of youth redevelopment where we had mm. absolutely no youth talent whatsoever. And then all of a sudden in the last year, it's like we bought every single young, talented player there is in Europe at this point. And uh, Archie Gray was one of them. And I think eventually he's going to play as a number six for us as more of a deep line kind of playmaker defensive midfielder he might play you know kind of alongside basuma or might play even ahead of basuma at one point um but it kind of looks like at the moment spurs are just going to plug him in wherever he can basically get into the team and that's kind of his mentality from the most part from a lot of his interviews he's kind of one of those very humble players that you know will kind of say you know just i play anywhere that the manager will yeah. let me and i play anywhere that i can get minutes and so far spurs have used him as that they started his first few games as a center back during preseason then a couple of games he had some moments in the number six role where, where he actually didn't look as strong he looked a bit uncomfortable but i think that's more to do with the system and what we're kind of asking him to do than it really had to yeah. do with his uh, ability i think he'll get used to it and then all of a sudden in the last game he came on against Bayern munich as a sub for pedro poro funny enough as a right back so at this point i don't think we have any idea where he'll end up playing uh, regularly, but it looks like Spurs have a lot of confidence in him kind of on an intelligence level. They just seem to really rate him for the fact that he can just sort of plug in anywhere and has a lot of quality, both out of possession and in possession, to be honest. And I think eventually he'll probably rival Basuma. I, I really like him. Honestly, I really like him. And, and, you know, versatility in a player is always a good thing, uh, especially if there's ever a part of the season where you, you're struggling with injuries or anything like that. It's And, and you know, rotation as well. Uh, European football and all of that. So yeah, I, I think um, it's it's uh, yeah he's an exciting one for sure. Whether he starts or not, you know, even if he came off the bench or anything like that, he he, he is he can make an impact. And the last one I want to mention is Dominic Solanke because last mm. time Leicester were in the Premier League, we used to get we it, Harry Kane was like a go, you know we were haunted by him every time he showed up at the King Power Stadium, and he always scored, always scored goals and. Um, You've managed to finally replace him, but it's with somebody who also loves scoring goals against Leicester City. That's great to uh, hear. Which is, well, yeah, it's a nightmare. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the score sheet uh, on Monday, honestly. he's uh, I, I really like him. I, I, again, I was speaking to, to my friend Matt, and uh, when you were first linked with him, I said, you know, that's that's a good sign in that. And he wasn't so sure because of the fee. And I said, yeah, I, I get that, you know, the, the amount that you've paid. But... I think in a Tottenham side, and I know he's only had one season of scoring 20 goals, but I think he scores 20 goals for Tottenham in a, in a, in a team with your qualities. I think he does that. And, um, you know, yes, mm. the fee might be over the odds, but, you know, at the end of the day, if, if he gets you top four, you know, if he scores 20 goals, it's going to be worth it in the end. I think I have a huge soft spot actually for Dominic Solanke and I'm kind of a, one of the few Spurs fans that probably does. A lot of them haven't been that excited about the signing. I think it's been yeah. one of those signings that people sort of rationalize 
over time mm -hmm. to themselves. They watch a few tactical videos and then <laughs> they kind of start to see why maybe Spurs have gone for him. But if you were to look at the initial reaction to when he was first being signed by us, the majority of fans, I think, were relatively underwhelmed. Like maybe you were describing Matt Hayes's a response for the most part. And even my partner, Dave, on this channel is for the most part pretty underwhelmed by the Dominic Solanke signing. But I think he suits what we're trying to do with our striker a lot more than maybe what we had with Sonny, who played the majority yep. of the season uh, down the middle. I think Sonny doesn't really play with his back to goal as well as other strikers do. We actually played better when we had Richarlison up front. It's just that yeah. Richarlison is not someone who you can consistently rely on to stay fit. He actually scored yeah. a lot of goals from us uh, for a good period there, but he's just as always injured. And so I think bringing in Solanke, who, funny enough, almost never gets injured, knock on wood, but he uh, he ends up being that guy that we can rely on to stay fit this season and be that focal striker up front who can win headers, but also kind of stay in the in the box and in the penalty area as that sort of poacher type striker for us. And he works really hard by the looks of things, too. He's one of those kind of big, tall strikers, but yeah. also tends to really press and likes to work hard off of the ball, which is a rare thing nowadays. And so I really like this lanky signing. And. I'm glad to hear that he actually scores against Leicester as well. That's a great start. So I hope to see him start. The funny thing is, you know, he's not even played a single preseason game for us. So that's the big question is whether he yeah. even will start against you guys. And sounds like by your remarks that you hope he doesn't. So that's good. I hear. hope he doesn't know. But then I look at, you know, who's the, you know, Son, to Son stuff. I'm like, it doesn't really matter. You're going to score goals anyway. It's fine. Well, well <laughs> then give us um your prediction for where you think Spurs will finish this season from an outside perspective looking in mm. um, and then also give us your score prediction for tomorrow so I, I did a, a season uh, like a table prediction um, the other day and and I actually said fifth place for Tottenham now I don't know if you, uh, you know from a Tottenham perspective whether you're whether you're you'll take that you're happy with that um, but I think it's going to be close. I think Arsenal and Man City are going to run away with the tight, you know, between them, they're going to fight mm -hmm. it out once again. Then I think third to sixth, anyone's, you know, yeah. it, it could go, it could go any way. And I just feel like it is going to be close again, like I said, but, you know, sorry to make a dig here to Tottenham <laughs> and, and it's a dig that everyone makes, but you just have that Tottenham in you, that, that bottle, you know, it it happens sometimes, uh, quite often, and uh, I just have a, you know, there's always a fear, a fear now with Tottenham when I look at them and I think, you know, if they are going through a good run of form and a good patch, I'm I'm just like something's going to go wrong. So that's the only reason I say fifth rather than fourth. I do fancy you to fight it out for fourth all season. I, I really do, but I think it'll be mm. fifth in the end. I think a lot of Spurs fans would be in and around that uh, prediction because plenty feel like Postacoglu is the right one in charge. Some people yep. are already starting to doubt Postacoglu and whether he is actually good enough. And so I think a fifth place finishes probably in between maybe what a lot of Spurs fans are predicting this upcoming season. I think it's just always the question of, you know, can we go further into the Cups, into the Europa League? Those yeah. are the sort of competitions I think we feel like we have a better chance of actually winning. And I think majority Spurs fans would agree with you that Arsenal and Man City are just still well clear of everybody else, including ourselves here. Um, but score prediction for tomorrow as well. Oh yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough. I, I I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go three I'm gonna go three one Tottenham. I, I'm gonna back us to score a goal. Um I think, Do you see you uh, scoring first or later in the game? Oh, no, we won't score. We'll probably score a consolation at the end or something mm. silly like that. Yeah, I think you'll dominate the game for, you know, 99% of it. I think we might nick a, a lucky one, whether it's from a penalty or a header or something like that. But um, I don't see any way less to win this. I think we're really, really, really low on morale as well in the squad after a honking preseason. It's been terrible. And um, especially, you know, we're, we're currently linked with like Wilfred Zaha and... Um, and mm -hmm. Hoysleck from uh, Bayer Leverkusen. If they have, if they come in before Monday, you know, before the game, maybe we, you know we might have a chance at scoring, you know, but more than one, for example. But I think it's going to be tough. So yeah, three three one Tottenham for me. I could see a three one as well. We also tend to score a lot of our goals in the second half. At least that was the case last season. So you never know. Maybe it might be interesting, nil nil at halftime. But then I could see Spurs actually starting to push past and kind of blow away from there. Yep. At least that was our style last season. But um, tell anybody who might be listening, whether Leicester fan, Spurs fan, about your channel, um, uh, the blue uh, tinted glasses, please, and also tell them about. I know you have a huge Twitter account and then a new YouTube channel. 
Yes. Yeah, so uh, obviously blue tinted glasses on Twitter. I, I post all sorts, you know, opinions and uh, and graphics and things like that. Um, and then, yeah, the uh, I'm still doing a bit of content for, for Leicester Fan TV. So you can check them out. And also I've got my own channel now, uh, blue tinted glasses. So, yeah, th- there'll be an opposition preview on there as well, um, d- you know, with, with Jack. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, you know, if you want to give it a watch, then please do. But yeah, brand new channel. So if, uh, if you want to hit the subscribe button, that'd be much appreciated. It will be in the description and also pinned in the comments for everybody. And do thank Locks for being our very first match preview with the opposition fan of this season. Looking forward Pleasure. to many more. Best of luck to you and uh, on the season as well. And uh, for us, come on, you Spurs. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Everybody go!